Well, what's happening, everybody? Happy, uh, happy Friday. If you're watching this live, it's Patrick Kirby, Do Good Better Consulting. Thanks for joining us either uh, live and in person, or if you're watching on the replay, how are you? Um, we have a fantastic uh, topic of discussion today. Uh, we've got a fantastic uh, guest expert training today on a topic that nobody likes to talk about um, because we are either proud or we are exhausted or two, uh, our minds are mush and we don't want to talk about it, um, which is why we're going to talk about burnout as a development director. So uh, the reason that this is so important and the reason that it's very timely today uh, is that it is fundraising spaz season. And what I mean by that is it is gala season. It is end of year financial season. It's budgeting season. It's the holidays coming up. And the, uh, a combination of that drives people insane. Uh, and and we're, we're seeing the same numbers that we've seen for years, which is individuals who work in the development department or fundraising professionals leave a job in less than two years. And the reason they do that is because they're burnt out and there are unreasonable expectations by their board and their boss and they're, they're just angry about everything. Like, why are we not raising more money? And you're trying to explain to them that this is not normal. And then you just give up and you go to another job where it's the same thing. And so I am super happy to uh, have Sari here with me. She is a um, going to walk us off of the cliff and uh, talk to us about how to reduce burnout um, in the nonprofit world. Sari, how are you today? Thanks for joining us. I am great. Thanks for having me on, Patrick. I am um, dope. Yes, this is good. So why don't you introduce yeah. yourself, kind of give you a little background on... Um, on you, and then we're gonna dive deep into how do we, how in the hell do we do this and uh, save ourselves a lot of stress. Yeah, okay, so first of all, I can totally relate to that. I have um, never worked in a nonprofit, but just being an entrepreneur, small business owner, and um, working with a lot of small business owners in my um, coaching business, I can tell you that burnout is like the number one thing um, that keeps people from being productive, right? Um, and it can come on in a lot of really easy ways. It can kind of be this silent killer that slowly sneaks up on you. And um, so yeah, I wanna share just some things about that today, but um, a little bit more about my background. Um, I worked as a paralegal for about 16 years. I worked for a trial lawyer, so I can tell you that I know deadlines and being stressed out and burned out. Um, did that for 16 years and then um, decided that I was going to um, jump ship from that and help my significant other build um, his independent insurance company. And so my role was to build the relationships. And I said, okay, I've got three months of salary built up right? I'm going to do this in three months. I'm going to go balls to the walls, kick it in the, you know what, and I'm going to get this figured out, right? I'm going to get this figured out. So I had all this stuff going on in my head and three months came and went a year came and went three years came and went. And, um, we, after three years had just met our goals that we had started, um, and we're hoping to create it three months down the road. And so, um, my personal experience with burnout is, um, you know, I understand it and um, it really inspired me to now coach small business owners um, and just anybody at all actually who really understands that they want to work on the internal stuff. Um, so that's kind of a little my background. Um, I worked as a success coach um, with Master Networks for a while and so that's where I really got connected to um, the small business owners and um, we talked a lot about this topic, stress and burnout, so. You know, it's funny, um, it, it's the small businesses and small medium-sized nonprofits have a very, uh, a very connected um, internal personalities. Uh, there's not a lot of room for error. Uh, there is always a deadline that seems insurmountable. And when you don't get it to on time, you don't have, you know, you, you budget a certain amount of money that you need to raise or you need to get as many clients or donors as you need to get in a certain amount of time. It doesn't come as easy as it is on paper. You know, it, it, it comes in waves or there's a drought of, of conversation or meetings and, and stuff. Just It doesn't happen as quickly as you want to. And I think that is where some doubt creeps in. That's where some, holy crap, if I don't do more someone's going to yell at me 
uh, creeps in. And then you, there's a guilt factor, isn't there? I mean, there's, there's this real big, I, I'm not doing enough and the organization that I'm representing is failing because of me. And I think there, the, the reason that the nonprofit industry is so stressful is that you feel like the weight of the financial burden of the organizations on your shoulders. Because as a fundraiser, you're the key to making their program successful, or at least that's how they position it for you. And it's exciting and it's exhilarating, but holy crap, is that a burden to shoulder, isn't it? Right, right. And um, yeah, and it's interesting because we do, we've got our higher ups, right? That say, um, you've got this deadline and here, you can do this, 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 and this. Here's some organizational strategies for you, right? Here's what you can do on paper, right? To be successful. And I noticed just in coaching with people um, in you know, small businesses, they would come to me and they would say, I'm blocked, right? I'm feeling stressed. I need to make my mortgage payment probably. And um, we were, we were putting together organizational strategies. Um, we were looking at their calendar. We were talking about how often they're networking. And here's what I would notice. Some people would do it, right? And um, then there were others where they would do it and they weren't getting results. And that's when I had to look and I had to go, there is something deeper going on here and we need to pay attention to it. And um, that was kind of my quest in really doing some deeper research on how the mind works. And so um, if you'll humor me, I would like to kind of share a little bit of that. I uh, humor away. I like okay. it. And, and, and really to, just to, to, to highlight your point, um, a lot of that continued frustration of not getting a yes for a gift or not getting a yes for a meeting, um, that creeps in. And it builds upon your family stress and it builds upon, I got kids and I've got to go home and I got to leave early. I can't stay as late as I used to be when I was kind of young and energetic to do a fundraising stuff. And so, yeah, there are layers of internal doubt and internal stress that we need to kind of clear the air with because if we don't, that, that becomes the, you're, you're a ticking time bomb to blow up in certain situations where you could have diffused it a lot earlier and to know that every, and to know, and this is a really important thing, and, and I hope you agree, everybody, regardless of whatever your industry is, has some sort of stress level. We all deal with it differently, but we all have it. And so you're not alone in feeling that you are not fundraising enough or meeting enough or doing enough. Even though you are, you're, you're grinding, you're not alone. So I, it's just one of those things like nobody's perfect and like you watch on social media that everybody is like, oh, what a nice life that they have. It's all <laughs> fake, right? Yeah. All fake. fake and news. it's stressing you out. <laughs> it's the worst. All right. Yeah. So yes, uh, let's, let's humor. So let's, I mean, let's talk about this through before we kind of dive into uh, yeah. techniques though. So, so I, when you and I talked, first of all, um, the thing that struck me most was you can de-stress yourself by doing less and that seems counterintuitive right mm -hmm. so it, it for some reason we always think if we do more the results are going to come quicker but we we arm ourselves with like i'm going to just pack everything i'm going to do everything and that leads to more stress so kind of talk me through doing less is more and yet what right so yeah i i our organization, our business, our success um, grows to the extent that we do, right? And um, I kind of look at this situation and I go, okay, so I use the hormonal teenager analogy because I, I just kind of made this up. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about this this week as I was thinking about um, we were going to be talking about this topic today. And um, Tuesday night, I get into um, my house Actually, I think it was Wednesday because my son has had school off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday because we live in Moorhead and he's on Fortnite and he's got wrappers strewed about, you know, candy all over the place. And my first instinct was, um, you know, to freak out on him. Right. I'm like, geez, Bryce. Oh, my God. Come on. Did you take the did you fold your laundry? Did you get the garbage taken out? Right. And what was his first instinct? It was to resist me, to tell me off, right? And so when I go about my organization with force, it's going to resist like a hormonal teenager, right? And so um, a lot of times um, what we do is we go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go balls to the walls 
and I'm gonna get this done, this done, this done. And it's not so much of what we do, it's who we're being when we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of energy are we feeding this? Because the kind of energy we're feeding our activity makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. um, if we're doing this from a forced state, the results on the other end are going to be to resist, whether that be a fundraiser, a donor, um, your organization, what have you. And so um, it really is, there's processes that we can talk about, um, about really calming our mind down and um, getting into a space of feeling differently about our organization or about fundraising in general. I, I, I think, um, I think we, some, some, uh, some public kind of thinks your mindset is this hippie thing that, uh, oh, okay, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna meditate and I'm gonna I'm gonna put on yoga pants and I'm gonna put some candles around and I'm gonna home for an hour and a half and and that's that's a mindset. That's the only way that I'm gonna change my mindset and that's a bunch of that's a bunch of haba baloo and stuff. Where really these are practical tips on how to calm your brain into into really stepping out of yourself and go all right hold on a second right mm -hmm. These, this isn't this isn't some uh eastern uh you know book that we pick off of the shelf that's kind of written by some guru with a really sexy title of a book this, no. is, this is this is really fundamentally just a way to calm yourself right there's a great yeah. sesame street bit where uh, they do uh, a Star Wars uh, spoof and Cookie Monster is trying to uh, do the force with the cookies or whatever. And so the whole thing is just you got to calm yourself. The whole thing is you're gonna be like, I mean, Sesame Street's getting this right. We as adults can get it right by using a couple of techniques. So, right. so let's go through a couple of them. So I mean, from okay. the basics to the basics, let's just say I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm stressed as a fundraiser. You're telling me that my mindset can change. What, how do I, how do I start rolling into this without yeah. feeling overwhelmed with the amount of stuff I have to do? How do I start? Right. Okay. So um, just real quickly before we do that, I think it's important to understand, first of all, that this is, there's science, this is science stuff. This is how our yes. mind works actually. Yes. And, um, I'm just gonna explain real quickly, when you're in a heightened state, when you're feeling forced, when you're in high activity mode, when you're feeling stressed, you're in a high beta state. Your brain is going boo, 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 doo, 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 right? And when we're in that state, our creativity is shut down, our ability to problem solve is shut down. I shouldn't say shut down, but you know, very diminished. Um, and our ability to retrieve short-term memory is a lot less, and so, <laughs> And, and, th and think about think about that's in, that's incredibly necessary for you to build a relationship with a donor. You have to remember things that you just had a conversation with about their their donor history or whatever they're doing, right? You're trying to build relationships with people that are going right. to give you money. And and frankly, like that that kind of stress level, if you're not on your if you're not on point, that's a, that's damaging to your own personal brand of conversation with donors too. That I mean that your creative your creative solution on how they can give and feel great about it is all here that's that's exactly what you need to do and be on point so that's yeah that's awesome yeah and your ability to listen too when you're in a high beta state your ability to listen is really shut down and taken what the other person is saying and as we know when we're doing networking the biggest piece of networking and the biggest piece probably of fundraising is listening to the person on the other side of the table yes yes so so um, when you're in this state, right, you're, um, you know, when your head is spinning, you're feeling overwhelmed, you've got to get, I don't know how this works for all of you, but you have to, you know, find $10,000 by the end of the month or something. Um, you're going, I have to figure this out, right? Your brain, the beta part of your brain is going, I have to figure this out, right? And so we're pulling stuff from that state, our, that brain state, when really our short-term memory, our creativity is down here in these lower brain states, these more relaxed brain states. So we're not gonna retrieve anything by being in this state. And so the key is to really sit down. Um, meditation, I mean, really, that is a big piece. I do hypnosis with people, and that's one of the big, biggest reasons that I do hypnosis with people is to just shut down, get them into the alpha and theta brain state so they can retrieve some of their memory and creativity back so they can um, have problem solution, thing, solution right. things in their mind, right? Um, but I would think about how are you feeling about fundraising? 
If you're feeling overwhelmed, how are you feeling about it? I would say jot down some of those things. And I would guess if you're feeling stressed, a lot of negative words are gonna start coming out. Well, when you think of the you know hormonal teenager analogy, when you're thinking negative thoughts about a thing, what is it gonna do? It's gonna resist. And so, you know, take those negative words and then well, how do you want to feel about fundraising? You know, what are some things that you can jot down and go, I wanna feel this way, I wanna feel inspired, I wanna feel excited, I wanna feel overjoyed when I get up in the morning that I'm going to connect with a lot of people. Maybe it's not, I'm gonna bring in this amount of money, maybe it's I get to connect with this many people today and that feels good. And so, you know, really getting into the feeling state of what feels good in my day and I'm going to do more of that, you know, in the direction of how to solve these problems. And, you know, sir, and, and I, what, what I use for that particular case is, and I lead with that as appreciation because that immediately gets you into the right state, right? I mean, you can almost use gratitude. appreciation and gratitude yeah. as your meditative state. You know, if you're showing gratitude, all of a sudden somebody comes back and says, oh, well, thanks for that. Thanks. And then you get a thank you for doing a thank you. And that makes you feel good inside. And all of a sudden you're back in that really kind of, uh, that awkward state. So you could actually use gratitude as part of this meditative state of just kind of saying, Oh, how do I want to feel with that list? Right? So part of this meditation piece or part of this reflective, um, th this notion of kind of getting your brain right is, all right, here are the things I'm doing now. Here's the way that I want to feel. If I showed gratitude, does that align with the list that I, that I want to feel? Pr probably, right? So your, maybe, maybe your action step is to follow your list of how you'd like to feel. Show that into the world. And, and what you said was pretty interesting because the way that you set this up is, and I'm hoping this is the next thing you say because it would be so awesome for the closed loop, is what you put out there as a person is what you get back, right? So that I'm, where I'm trying to travel with this is if you're gonna put all this negative vibe out, you're gonna get negative back. You put this positive vibe out, all of a sudden, all the positive things that you've been setting up for a long term because people like to be a part of someone who's super happy and enthusiastic and it comes back and all of a sudden you're like in a better place because people are calling you back and having meetings and you're reflective about that thing. That's awesome. Right, right. It's all a mindset. And it's simple. That's all it is. Yes. Yes. Okay, so so we've gone through. Yes, this is the best. I love this. I love the yes. So we're so we do some meditative pieces, right? So we write down the negative stuff. We say this is not how I want to feel. I want to feel positive. Maybe using appreciation or gratitude or whatever strategy you have to get there. What are mm -hmm. some other techniques that we can use? That's maybe um, not necessarily writing stuff, but how do we get prepared mentally from a mindset shift of I'm feeling overwhelmed to I'm feeling prepared to do. Well, I, you know, if you've got somebody pressuring you in your organization, I would say having a really serious conversation and being like having, spending time to, you know, share how you feel about, you know, what you're doing. Ask for help. Um, you know, yes. a lot of times the higher ups, right? They've got to produce and that trickles down because they're feeling forced and they're in they're doing the hormonal teenager thing on you. Right. And so, um, <laughs> right. And so, and so what is the feeling state that you can get in and express yourself from your heart and say, you know, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. And I think you'd be surprised as, um, you know, if you came about it, you know, approached it from that phase that they would, um, you know, approach you a different a little differently for one thing um, but also there's a book out there and I absolutely love it because a lot of this is on confidence too mm -hmm. and um, I think everything kind of stems around confidence for a lot of people I know it does for me um, when I'm feeling highly confident I'm you know out producing feeling more gratitude right you know it kind of stems from this feeling confident about herself and Dr. Bob Rotella wrote this really cool book about how champions think he is this um, awesome mindset coach and he works with a lot of um you know pro golfers pro athletes um singers actors who are forced to produce right and he actually told a story about the goo goo dolls and how johnny resnick um had to he had signed this contract and he had to um produce a top selling album right because 
his last couple weren't going anywhere. And he was feeling this pressure to produce, right? And things weren't going well and he had this deadline. And so this Bob Resnick brought him back, slowed him down, slowed his brain waves down, right? Got him into this feeling of, um, tell me a little bit more about you. Jot down a little bit more about you. Tell me what makes you, you know, who you are. And he started writing down all these stories. And he's like, that's what you use. That's your writer, your writer's block is down, gone, right? That's what you use, the stories about yourself. And so just slowing down your mind a little bit. And um, I don't know, I, I know people say that if they say they don't like to journal, I would really challenge that and say, you know, try to start writing things down because the process in itself brings your creativity back. I think, I think a lot of us as nonprofiteers and in the nonprofit fundraising world don't document enough from a donor's perspective. But I, I think I love this idea of documenting yourself as well. So I'm going to totally steal this as an idea as uh, to tell to everybody else because I think that's a wonderful way of not only sort of you know, being rigid with the amount of stuff that you just put on paper, um, but then you get to say, all right, these are the things that I learned about a donor today, but these are also the things I learned about what I like or what I experience today. And, and what if those things don't match, right? And so what if those things don't match and maybe the meeting went terrible because what you were feeling today and what the donor was telling you today didn't match up, right? So maybe that is a really interesting way to sort of look at it analytically uh, from just a I felt really terrible today. I met a donor who was feeling great. We didn't have a great conversation. I didn't get the money. I didn't get the sponsorship. I didn't get the lead. And what was the, what was the two, what was the difference? I wasn't feeling as great as they were. I wasn't matched up with them energy wise. And maybe that is a, a piece that you can use as a training module for that as well. So a lot of bosses who I think, which is, which is interesting because the bosses are equally as stressed as you are probably from that sales we got to make these numbers, got to make this budget, got to do this by the end of the year. Your suggestion, having a conversation with that. So how this goes, this goes one of two ways as I've, as I've probably experienced one ask, asking for help and they go, Oh man, what have we done to put you in a position? How can we help you? And then the other one is, well, you just get it done. I don't care how you do it. So are there, are there ways, I mean, I, I've got my way, which is just like, well, screw this, I'm in the wrong place, right? But how do you maybe deal with both of those and, and give back to the ones who are giving you and maybe walk through how you can talk, you know, talk over a person who's just not interested in your feelings of overwhelming uh, thing? Is there, is there a, uh, some suggestions that you would have to somebody who just doesn't seem to care? Well, I think that's where you and I come in, right? <laughs> that's why we have jobs. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> Good pitch yes, there. I like that. People, we need, people need a place to go yeah. to be able to self-express. If you can't do that, I mean, it's not always appropriate to be doing that, you know, in the place of work, right? You can feel, you can sense when it's appropriate and what to share and what not. Um, you know, find somebody who you can have these conversations with. And um, my favorite word is isumatak. And I, and I heard it from my friend Jody Bach. Um, isumatak is um, holding a space so wisdom can reveal itself. And so as coaches, we hold a space, right? And so a lot of times you have it all. You have the answers within yourself. You know more than anybody else what you need to do in your job, but you just need to pull it out of yourself. And sometimes that means having a conversation with somebody who's non-judgmental, unbiased, and can really ask you really good questions to help you self-discover the things that you most need to do to get on the right path because you have it in here. You know, mm -hmm. it just needs to be expressed and come out so you can see it, right? A lot of intuition in a fundraiser, um, except um, when it comes to yourself occasionally. And it's weird uh, that because we, I, think, I think a lot of us in the fundraising world like to give more than we get. And so we, 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 we express gratitude or whatever and we never ask for it in return or we never ask anybody else to kind of say, I need some perspective or I need something else. And really even getting perspective from people who are outside of the fundraising world is super, is super important because sometimes we get the horse blinders on and, and, and uh, someone's perspective like yours, who doesn't necessarily live, breathe and eat in the fundraising world 
might be able to breathe new life into a perspective that they know they have deep down inside, but they have no way to reveal that or, or converse with somebody because all they know or all they're doing is the, is the nonprofit world too, which I think is a, which is a wonderful uh, expression, whether it's a, whether it's a coach, whether it's a, with a group, um, whether it's uh, somebody who has nothing to do with the fundraising world, but is a really good listener. Um, I think that sort of advice right there is, is crucial. Um, so we're, we write some stuff down. We have conversations. We look for perspective. Um, we, we put ourselves in a position to say, I want to feel this way. Therefore, I am going to put good out in the world. Is there one thing that is harder than others, or is there some, is it sort of the advanced stuff? You get through a laundry list of these things that may not work and there's just still a block. What's the, what's the, what's the thing that you can uncover the most or how is that? How can you um, take it to that next unbelievable step? You, journaling is it, it's, it's kind of working, but it's not. You talked a little bit about um, even some hypnosis pieces. What are some of those advanced pieces just to kind of break down a lot of those barriers to make you feel less stressed as a person? Yeah. Um, well, that's what I was no noticing with, um, when I was doing my coaching, right? We would, we would work through these processes. Um, we would have organizational strategies. We would work on confidence. We would work on mindset. And so, for some people, there was still this thing and they would say, I know this logically. I know that I should this or that logically, but there's something just keeping me from, ugh, you know, taking that next step or um, seeing results. And so that's when I really started to dig in and go, what additional tools can I um, get trained in so um, I can help people with that thing, right? Yeah. And so hypnosis was what I have found was really helpful. Um, it has helped me through th some things with self-worth, um, confidence in general. Mm -hmm. And um, it really helps work with your subconscious mind, right? So it's a deep meditative state that I take you in and um, we replace the negative thought patterns with positive thought patterns. And it's like working a muscle, um, but it helps to shift your mindset more easily than, you know, we talk about affirmations and saying good things, but that's the conscious mind. And so the subconscious mind, which is you know, anywhere between 85 and 95% of our brain is telling you, nope, because this thing happened when you were a child telling you that that's what's really going on in your head, right? Mm -hmm. And so hypnosis helps with the subconscious mind where we're tapping into that piece and putting the positive affirmation into the subconscious mind. And this is, and again, you laughed at me when I talked about this too, is this isn't you up on stage at a college uh, 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 event on a Friday night just to kind of keep you from the bars no, no. and the hypnosis guy comes in and everybody acts like a chicken on stage, right? This is no. not, the, this is not that. Um, no. This is really getting into putting yourself at ease and sort of saying, listen, uh, you know that this is the right way to do things. And I know that you're super stressed here. So let's just put things into perspective in a way that's not traditional. Uh, to kind of deal with some stress, but it is is sort of in a in a in a calming and a safe environment, which we always look for as uh, fundraisers, which is trying to find the safe space to kind of have a conversation about some of this stuff too. So I think that so just it's not that. It's not that. It's <laughs> it's a lot of times people have um and I and I and I've had it, so I know this feeling. You've got anxiety, right? Fundraising can create anxiety, or the networking piece you have to do, or talking to prospective donors creates anxiety. And anxiety, a lot of times, if you're paying attention to the way you feel on your body, it sits right here. It sits in your throat chakra and your and your heart chakra right here. And it's a blockage. It's an energy blockage that needs to be released. I know this sounds a little crazy, <laughs> but it's the energy piece. And so what we do is we work with releasing that feeling. And so a lot of times what people will tell me is that this feeling that I had in my chest, this feeling, this pressure, I don't have that anymore. And their whole world opens up yeah. when they can release that. So, and you know, you get, you get rid of your stress. You go to work a little easier. Um, it's not a, uh, win or lose situation. You can then have those, um, uh, really fun relationships with donors again, and you can find joy 
in doing yeah. uh, some of this fundraising work, which is why we do it in the first place. So that was the quickest 30 minutes of all time, by the way, because we're already through. Um, right. So, I, Sari, thank you so much for, for helping us kind of walk through some mindset pieces. Thank you. Uh, let's, well, I'll drop a link to, uh, to you in the comments uh, when we post this again in the replay. Um, but tell people how they can get a hold of you if they're curious about either uh, getting some meditation tips or, or sort of engaging you uh, in some, in some, some coaching pieces. Well, where can they find you? Go. So you can call me at 701-799-6501. Um, or you can look on my Facebook page. It is Inner Spark Business and Personal Coaching. Or you can email me, um, my first name, Sari, S-A-R-E-E-R-E-V, -E 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 at gmail.com. Outstanding. We'll link all of that in the comments below. I appreciate your time today. I appreciate your perspective. That was awesome. And, uh, well, we'll be in touch because, you know, we've got- Thanks, Patrick. This was fun. Awesome. Thanks for having Thank me on. Thank you. See you guys. Okay. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.